With that, let's learn how to catch and maybe when they're going to show up. Those nice big plugs. Hey there, everyone. Uh, red drummer here. Black drummer here also. Cousin of the red drum. Uh, they're not thick yet. There's huge schools uh, off of Southern Shores and Kitty Hawk, and they're heading this way. Uh, probably five days, they'll, they'll come into the bay. And uh, they'll usually come in on the Nautilus Shoal side. Water temperature is still cold. Uh, we were fishing the other day, it was 61 degrees surface <coughs> temperature. But down on the bottom, it was in the lower 50s, upper 40s. I have a little temperature gauge I can drop. But the drummer here, we've caught drum, we've caught reds. It's not easy right now, they're in shallow water. Uh, if you don't know the eastern shore, <coughs> Don't go over there because you get in trouble really quick. <coughs> uh, I've been fishing since uh, fishing the Eastern Shore since 1982. I started drum fishing in 1974, and I learned to drum fish in the surf in Hatteras, in Oakland. and I learned from the best drum fishermen down there. And then when I started fishing up here, I learned from the best. Eastern Shore. Well, they're from here, but they took me to Eastern Shore and taught me how to fish over there. So I've been catching a Citation Red Drum every year since 1982. That's 35 years. So I know a little bit about it. Uh, three basic things. Learn to read the surf or the water that you're in, use your depth finder, learn what the fish want. They're lazy, they're gonna, they want easy food. And so they look like, uh, if you're fishing a hill, you fish the back side of the hill on the down current side because the water goes over that hill and turns up the bottom and the fish would sit there and eat stuff. They're lazy, you know, they're opportunistic feeders. Uh, and they used to be called channel bass. So that should be able to tell you right there, they're gonna stay close to a channel or deeper water. So if you can find deep water with shallow water right next to it, and I'm saying real shallow, like four or five feet, you want to fish right there. And the other day, at low tide, I've never seen this over on the, at the inlet, but there was islands everywhere in the middle of the inlet. They were out of the water. The kayakers were out there surf fishing off the islands. I thought it was pretty cool, but that a lot less places for me to fish because they're all out of the water. So I had to go find somewhere else to fish. But we did okay. But uh, the other thing you need to know is tying knots. Learn how to tie knots and make sure that they're good. The way I check my knots, I, I have, I snell my hooks, I tie a perfection loop on the end, uh, I have about 16 15, 16 foot shock leader, uh, 60 pound test. Put my hook on there. I hook it to the bumper of my truck and back out, get all my knots out of my line, out of my rod, and then I just lay it into it as hard as I can. And if I fall down and bust my ass, not wasn't any good. <laughs> but 
okay, so learning to read the water, tie knots, and then patience. Patience, believe in what you see, what you know, and knowing the fish, you know they're gonna be there at a certain time. Yeah, people, some people, some of these younger guys now, they jump all over the place. I say, I'm gonna fish here, and I'm gonna catch fish, and I'm gonna wait for those fish. Don't always work, but I'd say better than 50% of the time, I'm right, and I'll catch fish, because I'll wait for them. I know when they're coming, and usually the best bites are right before the tide's slack. The best bites lately have been after dark on the incoming tide. But the water's cold, so you're not getting many bites. You don't get many chances. We fish whole crabs, live blue crabs, in the spring. Females, small, small as you can get them. Then in the fall, I use spot. And I fish a totally different area then. Uh, I, like I said, I started fishing on Eastern Shore surf fishing and learned how to fish the surf, and tie knots, and, and catch drum. And half the time, we wouldn't even start drum fishing till Memorial Day. Now, we're fishing in March. But this year was all screwed up because of the weather. The water got so cold, it just made everything late. Kobe haven't even got the Hatteras yet. And we've already, you know, we, we should have caught Kobe in Hatteras already, but they're not there. They haven't got there yet. But they'll show up probably next week with all this warm weather and all the south winds that we're having. Uh, Water temperature, ideal water temperature, I like 60 to 63 degrees or above. But in the spring, I look for 60 degrees. That's, I, I want 60 degree water. At the bottom? At the bottom? At the bottom, yeah. If it's cold at the bottom, that's where the fish are, you know. There's other way, you know, not, bottom fishing isn't the only way to catch red drum. You can sight cast them, you can uh, fly fish, you can catch them on popping plugs, you can catch them on swimming plugs. I always carry a casting rod, spinning rod, and I like using big bucktails. And I like the color of orange. I don't know why, but and, uh, when you're approaching a school of drum in a boat, Come up behind them. Don't come from the side, don't come from the front, because if you do that, they're going to go down. You come up right behind them, they're going to swim against the current, always. Tide's coming in, they're swimming out. You bring the boat right up to them and just drop your bait in the water, catch as many as you want. It's pretty freaking simple. But then you get idiots out there that run through the schools and back up and do all circles and go crazy. And that's when you break out the pistols and start shooting. <laughs> that's when my friend said, okay, it's time for us to go in. But uh, always have a casket. Like the other night, my buddy went, well, last night, my buddy went. He went to throw the anchor in the inlet. And there was a school of drum right in front of his boat. And he didn't have a rod rig with a bait, with a, a bucktail or a spoon on it. I used either bucktails or 550 gold hammered Hopkins. That was what I learned down in Hatteras when I used to fish with Norman Miller over in Overcoat. He had me casting gold spoons all the time. And they still cast gold spoons down there. They, they, uh, they even got small Hopkins that they'll use for puppy drum in the surf. And uh, so I, every time I go down there, I load up on gold. You know, they go buy me gold Hopkins, gold 550 
because you can't find them up here. No one has them. No one carries them. And they used to make red and white ones also. You can't find those anymore. I got a half dozen of them. But I'm old, so I got lots of junk. <coughs> uh, bait fishing. I bought these pen fathoms a couple years ago. Great reels. Heck, I mean, they, you can cast your butt off with these. Even with the braid, I can cast a couple hundred feet from the boat. And uh, a lot of the surf fishermen down in Hatteras now are using fathers. They put 20 pound test on and fish off the beach. I put 50 pound power pro and I fish off a of boat because I'm too old to stand in the surf and take a pounding anymore. So I just find my spot, anchor up, and put my baits out. It's pretty easy. This is not rocket science. It's not hard. There's a lot of drum. You, know, you can go out and catch a lot of drum, a lot of really big drum, in a fairly short amount of time. I mean, it's, it's great fun fighting these the golden gladiators of the southern surf. And I use a fish finder rig uh, to tie, tie up all my hooks. I use ADOT Mustang J hooks, 100 pound leader. And I use coast locks for my fish finder rig. And then I put a coast lock to attach my hook. I have a perfection loop on the end of my leader so I can just switch it out real quick. If I can't get my hook out of the drum's mouth, I don't like to bring them in the boat. I'll leave them up at the side of the boat and just pull my hook out, take a picture. If somebody has never caught a drum, I'll bring it, I'll net it, bring it in the boat, take a picture, and throw it over the side. But, uh, Penn makes some excellent fishing gear, so I'm kind of sponsored by Penn now, so. <laughs> <laughs> because I catch big fish and they want pictures of big fish with their rods and reels. So as long as I put the pictures up of big fish with their rods and reels, I get them at cost. So that worked out for both of us. Uh, it, it's, it's just getting started. So yeah, it, there's no real rush. It's only the hardcore crazy people like me that go over there and three feet of water and fish. You know, they, uh, people that don't know what they're doing shouldn't do that because you can get in a lot of trouble real easy. And they'll be moving out onto the lumps within the next 10 to 14 days. And that's when you can catch them at Nautilus Shoal, Nine Foot Shoal, Latimer Shoal, any shoal that you can find. That they'll they'll be drawn on the shoals, and you usually catch them when the tide slows down, not when the tide's running real hard. But it doesn't matter which way it's going. When it starts to slow down, that's when they're going to catch because uh, they're they're lazy. They don't want to work for their food, so they just come in and just scour the whole bottom and any anything they find they eat. I catch, catch a black drum, they'll, they'll eat a crab, uh, catch sheep's head, caught 10, 12 pounds sheep's head, drum fishing, craziest thing I've ever seen. I, I, I'm drum fishing, I catch a big sheep's head of them. What the hell is this? <laughs> I didn't even know what it was, but it's fun. Uh, not really much more I can tell you about it, except you have to get out there and go. And when you're I'm fishing gonna, the shoals, are you fishing the edges? Yes. Okay, you so fish the edges. You got to remember, the channel bass. Mm -hmm. They like deep water clubs because they're going to come up from the deep to the shallow. That was my question. So basically, uh, there's a channel, you got your shoal, you would sit right on the edge. Try to get on the edge. I usually look for 10 to 12 feet on the edge of the shoal. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll fish a point 
like if a show comes to a point right. way out I'll get on that point because then I'm getting from both sides they can come from both sides but I like 10 to 12 feet that's on the shoal in the inlet four or five feet they're eight eight to ten feet right next to me but I'm in four or five foot of water and that makes it kind of rough and then, and then there might be two inches of water just just a stone's throw away so you have to kind of watch how the waves are breaking you know where to put your boat and don't put yourself in harm's way. Definitely, you know, don't know how to handle a boat in a surf, don't go there. It's dangerous. You said you use live crab. How do you hook your live crab? Uh, I take, I learned this tarpon fishing down in Florida. I get the crab, I have an ice pick. I go through the wing where the point is, right back from the point. Yeah, okay, so the, the point's on the side, yeah. so you go in about two inches maybe? Go in about a, not even an inch, maybe a half inch. Mm -hmm. And I stick that ice pick through it, and I slip my hook in. Do you leave the uh, That the way it doesn't do Yeah, I leave everything on except the claws. Oh, so the claws are... You, you take yeah, the claws I don't want to get bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like getting bit. I bite back. I'll bite their face off if they bite me. Okay. I've been known to bite heads off of mullet, faces off of crabs. Yeah. How about clam? Clams, uh, big nasty sea clams. Uh, that works for the black drum. The red drum don't really mess with. The problem with using sea clams, sharks, rays, skates, jump fish. Yeah, you can catch jump fish. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'll, if it ain't gonna eat a crab, I don't want to catch it. You said in the fall you use spots. Live spots or do you cut Live them back off? Live spot and spot, half a spot. Half spot. Cut them in half. Usually from now until June, I'll be fishing for reds and I'll slow down. And then again in late August, September, October, I'll fish for reds again. And if I feel like it, I'll go down to Hatters, which most of the time I don't. It's just gotten too expensive down there. Yeah, permits. Too many rules for me. I don't park. I don't, I don't go for the rules. That's why I quit charter. Too many rules. If you have any questions, you can call me. I'd be glad to answer your questions down. Okay. I've got another one. You got, it's a double dusk kind of hook. Do you have a fishery right on the edge of your boat? First losing daylight. How about the you, morning? Early used morning? to be, used to be only night fishing right. when I was learning in the 80s and 70s. I came up here and started fishing. We catch me really pretty weather, bright sun. Didn't matter what the tide was doing. Fishing in shorts, no waders, and, and it was. It was, I had to relearn how to fish because up here it was easy. Well, what wasn't easy is getting to the islands because you have to learn how to get to the how islands. To get in there. And that's, but if you're fishing the shoals, if you're waiting to that point, is you better off? Yeah, when, you go to the, when you go to shoals, now, shoals will cover a big area, right. but there'll be hills mm -hmm. on these shoals. And that's what you look for, the hills on the shore. Like, there'll be a big area called Nautilus Shore. But there's only a few hills on that. And you fish on the back side of that hill, which is opposite of the tide. Right. And uh, like I said, uh, Nine Foot Shoal, Inner Middle Ground Shoal, Nautilus Shoal, Latimer Shoal, you can get strung at all those. And along the beaches of the uh, uh, that barrier islands over there, mm -hmm. you just cruise cruise up and down the beaches, towing towing uh, some bucktails till you find a school, and just whale on. 
usually in June I start site casting. And you had said that in the fall you'd be fishing in different areas. Is that a different area of the shoal or a different area of the bay? Different area of the bay. Gotcha. Yeah, I like to look around the islands. I fish opposite of the tide. The tide's coming in. I fish on the other side. The tide's going out. I fish on the outside. And you're going to catch 10 foot pole sharks and duskies and lemons. And sand tigers. So you're using spots for bait, and, and a shark, you know, there's 60 foot of water, you know, just a couple hundred yards from it. Big sharks are going to come in there. So you got to have a tackle that's going to be able to handle that. If you, if you want to catch a big shark, if not, just use a lighter leader and let him bite you off. <laughs> I think it's pretty ignorant for red drum fishing. <clears throat> we used to get puppies. But is the red drum fishery, with these really good fish, is it mostly a catch and release fishery? I see so many people release them on pictures and stuff. Every, that, every, and are all, but also are they really good to eat? What's your favorite recipe? And if you've got a release, last question, what do you recommend for the type of hooks to use for release fishing? Because we, we live right on the beach on the shore, and we frequently get you probably know this uh, dead drum on the beach. Mm -hmm. And so I got, it got me thinking, I said, I wonder, you know, circle of people talk so much about them for being great for catch and release and bass fishing and all sorts of fishing. What do you recommend if you're going to be releasing the fish and if you're going to keep the fish, how do you recommend to cook them? Uh, first, I use J hooks and that's all I use. Okay. Because you can't set a circle hook if the fish is swimming at you. Okay. And the fish is going to swim into the tide. He's not going to swim over there. He's not going to swim over there. He's going to swim right at you. When he picks up the bait, he's coming to you because the tide's going that way. So, circle hooks. No good. Ah. I took a friend fishing. He had circle hooks. I says, You might want to change your hook. He says, No, nah, I've caught him before. Well, I caught five. He had lost three. Cut his stuff off, <coughs> put my stuff on, my J hook. Throw that out there. 53 inch drum. First cast. Wow. And, uh, I said, I told him. I said, don't bring that garbage on my buggy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a circle. And then uh, the recipe I got, I got it from Mrs. Gray in Oakco. Her husband, he was uh, Earl. He was. I think in his 80s, and he was watching me catch a drum one evening, and he kept getting closer. He had a yellow Jeep Cherokee. And I was watching him. I was going, what's this guy doing? Is that the police? Drum police? Or what? What's, what's going on? And he, he came up and he pulled up next to me and says, well, you catch some drum pretty good, boy. I says, yes, sir. He says, I used to catch him too, but I'm too old now. Uh, but I wouldn't mind if one of those drums happened to wind up in my cooler in my front yard. <laughs> and I said, if I catch one tonight, I'll uh, give me your where you live. He said, oh, I live right down by Black Bears on the corner. He said, oh, I know where it is. Gotcha. He says, my, son, my son's the uh, game warden here. <clears throat> I went, oh yeah, I know him too. <laughs> and he says, well, I'd appreciate it. I caught one that night, about 47 inches, took it to his house, put it in the cool with some ice on it, went back to the beach fish. <coughs> Next day, about four o'clock in the afternoon, he drives up. He says, you got a stove? Said, yes, sir. Pulls his pot out with drum stew, wow. drum chowder, Hatter's drum chowder, and pulls paper out. He says, this is from my wife. She, she wrote down the recipe for you so you can make this. She said, he goes, I don't know if you've ever had this before, but this is a real piece of head. And it was uh, potatoes, uh, stock, celery, onions, and then you take the chunks of uh, drum, 
and fry them up in bacon grease. You fry bacon first, <laughs> put the bacon to the side, then you bread the, the drum chunks, fry them up, set them aside when the stock's ready and the potatoes are soft, you throw, throw it in there, let it heat up a little bit, ladle it into the bowl, get you some crusty bad bread, take the bacon, crush it up, put it on top, and cold beer. Mm. Ain't nothing better. We'll try it. Sounds good. And I, I got that recipe back in the 80s, in the early 80s. Mr. Gray gave me that. And he even gave me a chance to buy his house if I wanted to, but back then I didn't have any money. Mm. Are you, uh, are you willing to give that recipe over to our uh, newsletter? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you I be can... willing to give that recipe to the newsletter? I can't hear you. Share the recipe. Mm. Oh, mm. share the recipe? Yeah, yeah I'll. Um, do any of y'all do Facebook? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm on Facebook. I give a morning fishing report, and weather report, every morning, except the weekends, and a blessing, and uh, whatever fish is going up, whatever fishing is going on. I also have another site called Drum Dummies. It's just about drum fishing. Yeah. Pictures, who's catching, you know, where. That's all it's about. It's about drone fishing. And I did that to pay honor to the guys that taught me how to fish. And I try to give back. But it seems like this young generation, because they've got computers and they know everything already. Right. And so, you know, it's kind of useless. Right, let's not lose half the audience now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I do have a site. And it, it's got drum recipes. It, uh, Eastern Shore does a similar drum recipe, but they use black drum because they like black drum over there. They sell a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, he, he saw us at the campground one day cleaning drum with a sawzall. <laughs> <laughs> there was. Blood and guts and scales <laughs> flying everywhere. It was, it, it was an easy way to clean them, but you know, a little messy. Yeah, a little messy. You just go jump in the water, That's get all the stuff off of you. Is Any there, other questions? Any other questions? Anything? I beg pardon. Where are you on Facebook? Captain Pete Brigant. B R E G A N T. And we're we're filming this for Jim Outdoors TV, and we'll put this up. Uh, yeah, that's Jim Bob. We'll either, uh, either tomorrow by tomorrow night or Saturday. This is kind of a long to upload. It'll be up on our YouTube channel, and then we'll link that to Facebook. And all of his links we'll also put on our channel. And if you just Google our name, we have our business cards here. You'll get, have all of his links and everything. Very simple. So. Anything else, Captain? Thank you very much. For your Yay! Time. Thank you.